Good evening and welcome to another episode of the San Antonio Soccer Roundtable. We had an exciting match against Fresno this past weekend that ended up in three points for San Antonio FC. Some much needed points and kind of a turnaround we've seen from the club now in the last couple of weeks. It's got us really excited heading into the Valley uh, for our Derby down there in Edinburgh versus RGV on Saturday. Uh, found out that the bus trip isn't going to happen for that event. Uh, couldn't get enough people signed up to uh, get that approved and, and head down there. But I know there's still a lot of people that are going to be jumping in their cars and driving the three, four hours, you know, past absolutely nothing down there to Edinburgh to go sit in an empty stadium and uh, out support the home team down there. But before we get into that too much, uh, uh, let's uh, let's talk about that Fresno match. Jose, uh, what, what, were, what were your thoughts from the game? Um, overall, man, um, I was kind of worried a little bit, not too much, um, with uh, Ever Guzman going out uh, against Vegas and getting that little injury that he got. Um, again, with the Spurs, we don't know how, how serious it is. So um, Bruce came coming in uh, at starting. So I, I was kind of nervous to see how he was going to handle it. If he was, if it was going to be too much pressure for him, or 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 what, but um, but I mean, you know, it wasn't. He proved that it wasn't. Um, overall, the team play, I think it was. Uh, I don't think it was as good as uh, Las Vegas game, but it, it was up there. It was up there in quality. Um, a, a big factor for me, and somebody that's winning me over this season as maybe one of the top two, top three players of uh, for the team so far is a uh, King. He continues to prove himself. Um, he's quick, man. He's fast. Um, in that first goal, that through ball that, that Sonny put on him, um, the defender, he, I believe he passed the defender. The defender was ahead of him and he just passed him and, and he couldn't catch up. And he, he put that uh, a ball in the, in the six box and um, uh, Gordon, wasn't able to get to it, but luckily uh, Bruce was there in the back in second post, and and it was it was a uh, it was a uh, a good goal and an, an even better celebration knowing where he comes from. Um, and then uh, the rest of the match, I mean, we you know we 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 kind of went back to that kind of kind of a counterattacking uh, system that we had a little bit and. Um, that Fresno goal, uh, Todd here will, will talk more about it. Um, but you know, I mean, it was it was an error on our defense that I think that could have been prevented. But you know, soccer, is soccer, so stuff like that happens. And then that wonder slash uh, blooper of a goal that Sonny had, uh, it was it was about what forty yards out, uh, probably about 25, 30. 25, 30, Okay, but it wasn't. And uh, it wasn't his goal. It, it, it wasn't a it wasn't a stray shot either because he kind of did it with the, the outside of the foot there to get a kind of a curve towards the second post and you know it hit the post and it hit right at the back of the keeper uh, I don't know if Scott that ever happened to you man but uh, I, I do know that it's happened to uh, <laughs> never I was always perfect uh, never, I do know that it's happened to uh, I know it happened to Mexico goalie once uh, I believe maybe it wasn't that Chile seven zero I'm not sure. Or on the Germany one, I'm, I'm not sure, but you know, um, it was a blooper of a goal, but it was still a great goal, uh, great to see. And um, finally, Sunny's on the board. And not over on the board. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna I give the celebration points table. to uh, yeah. Sunny, and um. Overall, I think, you know, the, the crowd was excited, I guess, after that victory from Las Vegas to have the team back and, 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 and excited to have them perform the, the way they have been. And plus, man, you know, Cinco de Mayo, a lot of people ha had already been drinking and celebrating. Uh, what they're celebrating, I don't know, because not even Mexico celebrates it. 
but uh but you know and 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 the club did have some good promotions you know a dollar beer three dollar uh, margaritas slash kool aids that they had out there those things are so sweet i don't know if it was too hot or they weren't expecting as many people to buy them but they were too liquidy for my taste and sweet and um you know we had some mariachis after the game but i think overall it was a good night a fun night for the for the fans that made it out there and um uh, hoping to see that you know we move on from this game and continue to grow and and let's not fall back to to the way we were playing before. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. I, I thought that, that goal, you know, I obviously I didn't give it to him uh, because it was an own goal deemed on on the score sheet or whatever. But I, I, I'm with you right there on King, man. He's been winning me over every week, um, especially. Yeah. So when, when you were talking about that kind of just the player of the season, I was sitting there thinking in my mind who I would choose for that, and I'm I'm right there with you on King. Uh, obviously, Alex Bruce playing very well. And, you know, you, you mentioned that he was right there where he needed to be this time to uh, mm-hmm. close it down and get that first goal finally after those two got called back last week. But uh, last week he was right there in the box, too, ready to crash one in if uh, if need be. So it's good to see him. He's always, you know, right there yeah. in the mix. But, Todd, uh, what, what were your takeaways from the match? Who was your man of the match? Let's start with that. I'd have to give man of the match to Diego. I think they picked right this week. Um those saves kept us in it. Um, we we could have easily, well, you know, one or two bad saves. You know, if he would have missed one or two of those, we would have lost, maybe drawn. Um, he made some spectacular saves. Um, King King would have to be my player of the season so far. Um, he's just phenomenal. And the way they're utilizing him on the wings um, is great. You know, three assists so far this season. Um, tied most for a San Antonio defender, and we're, you know, eight games into the season, nine games. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can look for him to have seven or eight by the end of the year, hopefully. Yeah. Um, Bruce looked really good to me. Um, I thought he played really well. The connection with him and uh, Gordon looked really good to me. Um, there was some really nice passing between the two. Yeah, how, how did you like Gordon? Um, just having the fact that that he hadn't played as much. I mean, well, I expected Gordon and Bruce to work well together. Um, they room together on the road. They drive to practices together. They know one another, you know, and mm-hmm. you have to talk in the car, you know? Yeah. So I expected them to be on the same page. Um, I was really impressed with Gordon. I thought it was Gordon's best match of the season so far. Um, when I said Bruce, I thought was really good. Um, still not sold on our center, mid- center backs. Um, I thought the one goal that was given up, don't get me wrong, Fresno, that pat, that heel pass to Johnson it was, was nice. really nice looking. But if if Ryan had been in position, that would have never got to Johnson. So that, to me, was – that goal was against our defense. Um, I still think Restrepo's doing a great job. Like I said, I – out of all the goals that have been let in, I've only put one on him, and it didn't really matter. He was, you know, the third goal against OC. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter. He was trying to make something happen. You know, everybody was pushed forward. So um, I was amazed that San Antonio didn't make any subs until the 90th minute. That did surprise me. Um, kind of a little different than what it had, what it had, what it, what they've been doing. Um, Jose mentioned they didn't look quite as good as they did against Vegas, but the lineup wasn't the same. Um, you know, Bruce was the shouldn't first. be in there, but man, he's he's proven himself uh, week in and week out. You know, I've been against Sarafa from the start, um, thinking that he had too big of a role. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was wrong. He's been looking really good, and he's shown to be the true leader of that team. I agree. Yeah, I think you saw um, Ryan a little bit. I know one of the big uh, concerns over him being captain and talking to the official and stuff like that. I kind of saw him this last game doing a little bit more of that, though. So it was kind of good to see him actually, you know, complaining about calls and stuff like that and fighting for his teammates. Uh, but Rafa has. He's he's outperformed what um, I know my expectations were for him this season, not because of skill or talent, but just because of age. You know, it's not a knock on him. It's just – for him to be playing the amount of time he is back to back to back, it's it's good to see. It's it's really good to see. So one question I was kind of curious, just uh, 
I know we were talking about Diego and stuff like that, and I'll start with you, Todd. Um, but as far as the U.S. Open Cup, uh, you know, we'll know who our opponent's going to be tomorrow, and uh, that game will be, you know, coming up here. Who uh, who do you see playing goalie for San Antonio FC in the Open Cup? Do you see Diego or Lee or maybe Cardone? I see Cardone um, for the simple fact that from Saturday when we face RGV, <clears throat> um, so set, we have that match on the 12th, then we have on the 16th, we have the Open Cup, and then on the 19th, we have RGV. So in a matter of a week, you know, seven days, we have three matches. I don't see Diego going all three, um, so I see him giving Cardone the uh, Open Cup start. It'll be fun to get, to get to see him play. I, I hope I hope we get to see some minutes from him. I know they they played Lee Johnson a little bit last year out there in the Open Cup, um, but I you know it'll be fun just kind of to get to see him get some minutes hopefully and everything. What about you, Jose? You, you see Cardoni playing goalie for the Open Cup as well? Yeah, most of the teams and this is like worldwide that we see most of the teams that play the cups they'll, they'll put in their their second keeper out there uh, along with their second striker. Um, so yeah, I expect. Cardoni to be in the open cups as as far as 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 we can go. Well, we've got another game yeah, coming. I think that first round first round match we're gonna have a totally different lineup. Um, I see uh, Cuomo being in for defense. You know he's been on the bench in the eighteen every match. We haven't seen a minute. Lopez. Yeah, you know, I see him run out for the. Uh, for the Open Cup, Lopez, he's been sitting out the last couple matches. Um, my big question is, if Guzman is healthy, who plays against RGV and who plays against in the Open Cup? Man, it's, it's tough. It's tough because, okay, let's say he's not healthy. Let's say his, his injury's uh, longer. Does Alex Bruce play RGV, Open Cup, and then Tosa? I would think he can. He's 19 years old. Or, you know well, I mean? well, yeah, but but as far as as you know, the way teams do, they try to rotate, right. yeah, risk and, and try to not over over uh, use your player or whatnot. But who else can we well, if, if ever that there? Is who can play a forward? Um, I think you could put Elizondo. You know, I think you could put Elizondo up there, even though he usually lately he's been playing in the midfield. Um, so there, there are options, um, but again, it's the big question is Bruce. The last two matches has proven that, that he can play at this level, um, I agree. and truthfully, they have been the t- two matches we've looked the best all season. Do you ride that hot hand and let him start again, or do you put your more experienced veteran who's been with the team a while in the start? I don't think I'd want to be in Derek Powell, Coach Powell's shoes right now. It'd be a tough choice. Yeah, that's why I think it'll be tough for him. Yeah, and also Presley. You know, we don't know how how bad his his uh, injuries. Also, he could be ready. He could be not ready in two weeks, three weeks. What you know how Spurs handle stuff. Right. Yeah, it's just uh, I know last year we saw some interesting lineup changes and stuff like that with some of the new guys for the uh, Open Cup matches. So. I'm excited to see kind of some of the players that maybe we haven't really seen get a whole lot of minutes this year, uh, get some minutes and just kind of get to evaluate them and, and see what they look like and, and know how deep we are. Uh, but moving on to uh, next week. And will we see Sip? And will we see Sip? Yeah, he's definitely one of them. You'd think he would, right? I mean, for the Sip. Open Cup. I don't know. You don't think so? I don't know. Or you just don't know where he is? I mean, I don't, I don't know where he is. Yeah. Right. That's Chris Christian. Yeah. Where is he? Someone mentioned that on Twitter or Facebook, one of our comments when we asked was like, where's Chris? So, yeah, where's Chris? Remember that show, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Where, where, where in the world is Chris? <coughs> Whoa! <laughs> got him, got him. Oh, man, I was just like, Carmen San Diego, golly, dude, you took it where way Where in the back. world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, yeah. where, when the world is Christian, man, I don't know. It's Christian, yeah. We'll have to make a little uh, mini series out of that, I guess. But yeah. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, to the comments that we've kind of gotten on Twitter and stuff like that, and uh, we appreciate you guys interacting with us. Uh, we do plan on going to a YouTube live format 
uh, based upon kind of some of y'all's feedback and stuff like that. It seems to be uh, the most popular choice and what you guys think will, will work good. So we'll give that a shot. We want to hear from you. We want y'all to be able to sit at the table. So thank you for that input. Um, but we're just kind of testing out the uh, video stuff uh, one more week and uh, getting that all lined up so we can have an episode that goes off without a glitch. Um, this this episode tonight's already kind of cut in and out a couple times. So just want to make sure we have everything necessary to uh, get it functioning properly. So, uh, But moving on, as we mentioned earlier, there is a match coming up in Edinburgh versus RGV on Saturday. Um, Todd, I know you're riding down there with uh, Paula and Wesley to go see the game uh, live. So we'll start with you. What are your thoughts for this matchup? Don't under, don't underestimate the Toros. Um, I know they have only won once, um, so they're sitting on like six points right now. Um, but they play better than that record indicates. They can score goals. Um, their defense and their goalkeeper are finally getting on the same page. Their last two matches have been clean sheets. Um, one of them against a team that pretty much devastated us in Orange County, who they won beat two to zero. That was a surprise. Um, yeah, that was a shock. Um, they got some good players. Um, you're going to hear a lot of people complaining on Twitter this week about the whole, oh, they're going to be playing Houston Dynamo players. Seriously, people, that's a non-issue. These are not the designated players for Houston. These are not the starting 11 for Houston. Most of the time, they're not even the team. These are fringe players who technically are probably better off in the USL to develop their talent. Um, Memo Rodriguez is one that we might see. Um, before last weekend, when I was watching the matches, he had two appearances for a total of seven minutes with the Dynamo. So we're not talking these are the stars. Um, every time we play a two-team or a hybrid team, we hear it. And it's not an issue. It's something that someone can complain about if we lose. Oh, they sent down seven players. They sent some, down seven players that we that have never seen the MLS pitch. So don't worry about that. Um, the one the ones to watch out for are Todd, Todd Wharton, their captain. Um, he's already been on the team of the week twice, and this is when they were losing and drawing. Um, tied for the team lead in goals. Tied in the team lead in assists. He leads the team in the key pass category and the overall passes. Um, he's the team captain. The whole offense is going to revolve around Todd Wharton. And the other one is their forward, um, Aldo Quintanilla. Quintanilla. Um, he's the one he's tied for the lead in goals with. So those are the two you got to watch out for. Um, and then Nico Corti, their goalie, is really coming on to his own the last couple weeks. Um, but... He's only registered 11 saves on the season for a whopping 58% save rate. So if we can get in and pressure him, there's a chance that we can knock in some goals. So speaking of knocking in some goals, what are your score predictions then for this one? 2-0 loss. I like that. I like, like, like 1-0 uh, San Antonio. Well, we'll have to see what they do. Uh, obviously, it's it's a big rival. I know for a lot of people, it being Mother's Day weekend, it's just going to kind of be a little bit difficult uh, to make that trip down there to go see that game uh, in person. So um, however you're watching it, you know, support the club, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's going down there and everything. And it's going to be kind of a short turnaround time because we've got a few matches coming up kind of back to back with the uh, Open Cup, as we mentioned. Well, Jose, did you have any final thoughts or anything you wanted to add? We know this is kind of a short episode this week, guys, uh, but uh, with Open Cup starting up and everything, Harry's not really feeling too good, so we wanted to get something out there to you, just kind of congratulating the guys on Fresno and, and taking a look at the RGV match coming up. Uh, but final thoughts, Jose? Yeah, um, I just hope the team keeps to improve, keeps improving on, on what we've seen. Um, it's good. I think it could be better. I think the like everybody said, the potential is there to to improve on what we've done so far, and um, I hope um, uh, I'm not sure. By the way, the injury looked when when uh, 
Guzman uh, went down in Las Vegas. It, it must have been some sort of a hamstring or something pull in the back. So th- th- those are kind of tricky, and, and those sometimes takes a while. So I'm thinking Alex is going to be uh, playing again. And um, uh, I, I've believed in this kid since, you know, we saw his, his preseason stats. You know, he kept scoring, so hopefully – he continues that. I know Todd believes in him. Um, Before like, we saw uh, his preseason, let's just say that. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, you beat me that one. Yeah. And uh, just one thing I want to add is um, the academy team, if you if you haven't had a chance to go out, they are going to be playing Saturday in Houston, but on Sunday they'll be playing at Star. There's going to be two games out there starting at um, 1 o'clock and the second one at 3. And this is going to be the second to last chance. You can see them uh, here in San Antonio. The next opportunity will be in uh, June third for their, um, I believe, for, for their final match of, of this of this season. So uh, if if y'all haven't had a chance to go out to see the guys, the boys, um, head on out there. You know, for it's Mother's Day, so maybe you could, you know, a couple of hours of soccer out there before you go to dinner or lunch or after lunch. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Um, hopefully, we get another win and continue to climb up the 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 ladder in the West. Yeah, I'm just going to do uh, the, the old, um, you know, like a, a Manny Petty gift card and give that to Savannah on Sunday so her and her mom can uh, go go get a manicure, and then I'll just take Delania and we'll go watch the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds like a plan. <laughs> what about you, Todd? What are your final thoughts, man? You know, the crowd at Toyota Field was great this past weekend. Um, the boys are going to need us in uh, in the Valley, so if you have a chance to get down there, Let's, you know, like last year when we went down there, let's bring a nice contingent, cheer on them, you know, pumps up the guys. Um, as Jose said, the academy teams, they play great. It's a great time out there. Um, unfortunately, there's no booze, but it's still a good time out there. You get to hang around a lot of people, talk soccer. Um, I know a couple of the Mission City people will be out there next Sunday. You'll probably see me out there. Scott probably go out there. Jose brought it up, so I hope I see him out there. So let's just keep supporting San Antonio Football Club in all its form. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. We've got some other teams fixing to start up and everything too as well. So we'll we'll be sure to uh, highlight those and everything um, and talk about some of that as we get a little bit closer to their season. Uh, Samba FC and then obviously the San Antonio Blossoms. WPSL going to be starting up. I think they usually start up in like June, don't they? It's a quick season. It runs through. It's only like 60 days to try and get all those games in. But I think it's June, I think. June, yeah, yeah, into June, yeah. Okay. So uh, just uh, stay tuned. And uh, while you're doing it, um, while you're watching this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel because, like I say, that is what we're going to be using to do all of our live broadcasts and stuff like that. So if you could just hit that subscribe button, um, that way you don't miss out. We really appreciate all your guys' help and uh, feedback and, and just bearing with us as, as we go through this process and as we continue to learn and get into a mid-season form. So, Todd and uh, Jose, thank you for joining me. Uh, Harry, we hope you get to feeling better so that you can come join us on the uh, next one. But this is the San Antonio Soccer Roundtable. We out. <laughs>